Welcome back, watch fans. Today we're talking about Langunzon, uh, Hitler's favorite watch company. And um, we're going to be discussing, is this an overhyped brand? Is this a Fugazi brand? Uh, what is wearing a Langunzon uh, watch say about you? Now, before we get into it, on the wrist, we got the Patek Philippe 3940G, the top G perpetual calendar. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. Hang on a second. We got the also... Uh, yeah, we got bad lighting. Uh, the ellipse cufflinks to match. Now, yes, I know it doesn't work because this is white gold. This is yellow gold. But you got the blue, uh, which kind of is a more of a, a cooler metal. Listen, guys, don't try this at home. This is a very advanced look. This is not for the amateurs. I am a professional. Do not try this at home. Now, uh, let's get into this. What is my big issue with Lang Um, Here's the thing. Look, uh, first of all, uh, I have certain biases, right? Uh you know, just like the H-Man uh, had biases, I am biased also. I, you know, I'm an esthete, right? I like beauty. Uh, I believe form follows function. So uh, the the beauty of, to me, the Patek Philippe Perpetual, the 3940 model, is it's a thin, elegant watch. It's got a classic, timeless look, right? You don't know when this watch was made. Was it made in the 1950s? Was it made in the 2040s? We don't know. The white gold also makes it very contemporary. See the moon? The moon it doesn't have any cute character, you know, caricatures of you know the moon man. Just flat white gold, baby. Um, look at this. It's it's perfection. Now, could there some things be better? Yes, yes. You know, the, the fonts could be better. You know, I'm, I'm a font freak, and the fonts could be slightly better, but on the numbers, but that, that, it is what it is, right? Now here's the thing, Lange. If you talk to a lot, one of these Lange people, right? What's the first thing they do? You look at the Lange watch. What's the first thing these these low life degenerates do? They want to show you the back. They they take off the watch and they show you that movement. They whip it out. They want to show you that movement, baby. Uh, the watch, the face, no, nah, they don't care. I mean, it's it's like these guys are, are it's it, it's bizarre, right? These are these are, I call these guys gear fetishists, right? You know, um, they're, they just have a movement. They're uh, machine fetishists, guys, right? Now, here's the thing. Uh, I'm going to get into this uh, in deeper because, you know, the Germans, they're known really for their weird uh, sexual fetishes, right? You know, the leather, the vinyl, you know, all the toilet fetishes. Uh, you know, it, it, I can't even go into all the bizarre exotic stuff uh, that uh, the Germanic, the Teutonic uh, mind is attracted to. I don't know. It is uh, it is what it is. But, you know, listen, the Germans are generally very intelligent people. And, you know, there is a correlation between high IQ and, you know, sexual perversity into weird weird things, right? Like, who am I to judge, right? As the Pope himself said, who am I to judge, right? So, you know, I'm not going to judge some guy if he, you know, likes to, you know, uh, put on a, a leather or vinyl gimp suit and have, you know, uh, guys pee on him in a bathtub or whatever. Hey, I don't know. Uh, it's not my thing, but maybe that's what, you know, that's what somebody needs to, you know, to get started in the weekend. You know, during the week, the guy's a productive citizen, you know, they're, uh, you know, a lawyer. A lot of lawyers are into this, by the way. A lot of lawyers are into uh, S&M. Uh, but, okay, so back to the back to the topic. Um, so here's the thing. These guys are all gear fetishists. They want to show you the movement, the hand-finished movement. Okay, big, big deal. Um, and, uh, yeah, listen... And, and then and the, next, the next thing they tell you is how accurate the watch is. How accurate the watch is. Now, here's the thing, guys. The accuracy debate, the accuracy debate has been settled, okay? The accuracy debate has been settled um, by courts, by Casio, okay? If you want an accurate watch, you get a Casio. You don't get, you don't spend a bunch of money on a Patek Philippe if, if you want accuracy, okay? That is, that's the last war. You know, the generals, they're all trying to fight the last war. That war, that debate has been settled, okay? So don't talk to me about accuracy. The only reason to wear a mechanical watch today is is you want uh, beauty on your wrist. It's a piece of art on your wrist. You know, listen, let's be honest. It is a bit of a flex. It's jewelry. It's a static. I don't want to get into that whole angle, but that is, that's the reality, okay? You want us, you want something beautiful to look at. You know, listen, I, I'm into art, okay? I collect art, right? This is kind of an extension. Other guys who are, there's a lot of guys who, you know, there's some big collectors of art. I know they're into vintage cars. They're into watches also, right? Like uh, this guy, Philip Toledano. Uh, check out some of his videos. He's a very interesting guy. Um, you know, so it is. It, that's that's the thing, right? So, uh, but the debate, the debate on precision, accuracy, that's been settled. Okay. So the only thing that matters today is the aesthetics, the beauty. Okay. The beauty of the watch is the only thing that matters. And look, the movement. Yeah, you got to have a good movement because you know, listen, it's got to be legit, right? 
What I mean legit is it's got to be, look, I don't, in-house, out-house, I don't care. But, you know, not quartz. I'm just saying it's got to be an accurate, you know, movement. You know, I'm sure, look, JLC, Patek, Rolex, Omega, they're all good. They're all good. I, you know, I don't really care, whatever. They're all good. The hand finishing means nothing. Now, let's talk about my issue with the watch, the design. This is my big, big, big thing. So my big thing right away with the design of the watch is it's a very Germanic watch. It's got that Nazi sensibility of 1930s. Like these numbers, it's got that very Nazi font, the whole, the very bulky, very like... Uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm trying to articulate this, but there was a design language of the 30s, uh, of the Nazi era. Uh, and this watch epitomizes it, right? And I, listen, am I saying that these guys are Nazis? That the, uh, Well, we know that they were. We know they were, <laughs> actually. They gifted uh, the H-Man a pocket watch. Hang on, I'll get into that in just a second. I'm going to get into that in just a second. Uh, the uh, There's some great, if you, if, listen, if you just... Google uh, Langenzone Nazi, you're going to see some uh, interesting articles. Um, and is this Hitler's? Yeah, I think this is Hitler's pocket watch. No, this was gifted by him. Uh, yeah, it's signed. Look, he's got an autograph. Now, I'm going to get into that in just a second. Uh, but but the first, before we get into the H-Man, let's finish off the design language. So it's interesting. I was, um, um, I was in Venice. Uh, what is it, last year? I was in Venice last year. And... Uh, uh, no, I was not. I was not meeting with uh, you know uh, the uh, the the leprechaun with the monkey eyebrows. I was actually there, you know, on uh, some uh, business business. And uh, you know, look, my um, you know, look, look, the jet, the jet was uh, it was in for maintenance. It was in for maintenance, and you know, I don't like to fly with the with the riffraff, the hoi polloi on a on a packed uh, plane. I, I wanted to go to Munich, right? And you know, so I figured, let me let me hop on a train, right? It's a six hour ride, but hey, you know, I've never done. Yeah, I like train rides, right? Now. Um, Interesting. So the German train, the Deutsch, was it Deutsche Deutsche Bahn? What do they call it? The D, whatever, Autobahn? No, not Autobahn. The whatever, whatever it is. The, 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 it, listen, the train's very interesting. It was like a big, heavy train. Everything was metal, covered with metal. This thing must have been from the 1950s, from this era, basically, right? 1960s, early 60s, maybe. Very heavy. All the doors, the compartment with heavy glass. It was ridiculous, right? It's nothing like uh, uh, you know a Talis, uh, the French, uh, the French trains or the Frecheros. Uh, uh, n- nothing like that, right? I mean, very heavy, bulky. That's what this watch is. It's it's just a heavy piece of shit. It's thick as a hockey puck. It has no elegance, okay? It has no elegance at all. Look at this. Look at this monstrosity. Look at this monstrosity. They, they're trying to flex. Look at this. This is a beautiful watch, right? Now, this watch does everything that that thing does, right? But it's thin. It's thin. It's elegant. It's beautiful. The Germans are not known for the sense of fashion. Anybody know? Can anybody name a, a, a any German like fashion, like, uh, I don't know, companies. I mean, the only one I can think of is Hugo Boss, which basically, uh, Hugo Boss's best work, his greatest work was uh, in the 1930s when he was designing uniforms for for the Nazis. (laughs) But, and and, you know, listen, these guys had great uniforms, right? They had great, they probably had the best uniforms uh, of, but for sure, of the war, right? The British, the Redcoats, obviously more elegant, back in the day, but, you know, that's not exactly practical to be at a field of battle with a wool red coat with the gold braids and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, uh, the look of the watch is, I mean, you got this very Nazi uh, Teutonic look with these uh, numbers, the fonts and everything, uh, and I think that's what the watch is. I, I, I Again, I'm not saying, but it could be that these guys have this kind of, um, you know, um, uh, affinity for and uh, nostalgia for the, you know, the Nazi past uh, of, of Lange, right? Uh, and that's why they kind of came up with this design, because it's interesting. The, the watches of the past did not really look like this. They weren't as uh, Germanic uh, looking. Uh, so anyway, look, bottom line is the debate has been settled on accuracy. We're not going to debate accuracy, okay? We're not debating it. I don't care if it's more accurate. I don't care about, you know, the movement finishing, because you know what? Listen, if I'm driving a Ferrari, uh, you know, I don't uh, go around uh, saying, "Hey, baby, check out my engine." You know, uh, you know, you know. No, the, the the look of the car is what sells the car, right? And yeah, you know, they do have. Remember, they started doing that glass thing to cover the engine, so you can see the engine. It's nicely finished. You, know, you see that red again. I, I don't know. I'm not a Ferrari expert, but you know, they were doing that. I don't know if they're still doing that, but you know, it's cool to look at. But the, is it the end all? No, I don't give a shit, right? Like, um, you know, the the the, the engine of the watch. 
has no effect on your experience okay when you're driving a car right yes the engine matters the sound of the engine the performance uh you know like i have uh, a bentley right uh, an old bentley i'm not trying to flex but you know the the sound is beautiful right it's a v12 a w12 excuse me w12 uh you know the it's it's actually made by volkswagen audi a phaeton based on the phaeton model right uh and uh, it sounds amazing very reliable um uh, and it performs great, right? Is it, uh, you know, it, can it go to 200 miles an hour? Yes. And it's a great value, that car, right? You know, you buy that car used, it's a good value. I'm, I'm not here to plug the car, but here's the thing. Uh, I do feel, in, in a car, you do feel the engine, right? I don't like I don't like Porsche where you get that vibration or, you know, the, the engine, it sounds like a, like a lawnmower. These these kids with their McLarens, with that, that cheap lawnmower sound that they got. That's not for me, right? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an adult, right? I need something smooth sounding, like whispery, but it sounds powerful. It, it's it's there's 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 a feeling you get from like a, that era of Bentley or today Bentley. I don't know. I haven't I don't I haven't driven any of the new ones, but so there's there's a difference. But when you're when you wear a watch like this, you don't feel the movement. You don't feel the engine. No, you the accuracy. They're all accurate. They're all accurate. Okay. The only thing that matters is the looks. Okay. You want something that's elegant, thin. You can't fit this under a cuff. I mean, you can't fit this under a, a, a bespoke shirt, custom cuff like this. Uh, and you can't do that with this piece of crap, this hockey puck. Um, so yeah. So that debate has been settled now. Uh, what does a watch like this say about you? What does it say about the wear? It says basically either you got some weird sexual fetishes, right? Like you, you're probably into, at the very least, you know, some sort of, I don't know, S&M, uh, you know, wearing the, the leather costumes and all that. And maybe you like getting uh, uh, pissed on or, or you like, uh, you know, <laughs> things, uh, things uh, a little further along uh, down that uh, value chain, so to speak, right? You know, the Germans have... Have a lot of uh, kink of you know they have the the scheiss the scheiss film right the scheiss film right they'll look that up uh, that they're into that they're into weird 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 shit no pun intended weird shit no pun intended right uh, so basically says you're 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 some sort of degenerate right uh, and I'm sure you look like a normal citizen you know you probably you know button tie whatever suit button whatever uh, but you're you're definitely some sort of weirdo or uh, you have an affinity for uh, Hitler, right? You have a, a Nazi uh, fetish. Uh, and by the way, uh, most of the Germans, you know, listen, I'm not, I'm not here. This is not here to make the Germans feel guilty or any of that stuff. But let's be real, you know, they did support. Uh, most of them did like Hitler. Uh, at least, you know, probably 50, 60 percent of them were fans of Hitler. Uh, for sure, fans. Uh, except when the guy started losing the war, then they said, "Oh, we were following orders." You know, this. Plus, I'm not blaming the Nazis. I'm not blaming the Germans because, look, here in America, in the Western world, we got the same thing, right? You got uh, the left, which is no different than than the Nazis, right? The left, the uh, Antifa, which are you know, basically Nazis. They claim to be anti-Nazi, but that's the irony. They actually they are actually Nazis, right? Totalitarians. You got Justin Trudeau in Canada. You got, uh, you know, you got the British government. Uh, these leftist movements are are actually worse than Hitler. Actually, they are worse, right? Because they claim to be, you know, uh, all for you know whatever, and you know they're actually worse than the Nazis themselves, right? At least Hitler was honest. Hitler, for all his faults, was was a guy who was honest. He said exactly what he was going to do. Uh, and these guys, they kind of uh, talk out of one side of their mouth, and you know, uh, but yeah. So the, look, the the whole. Uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, uh, defund the police. These are all basically uh, you know, variations of the Nazi thing. Now let's get into the H man himself. Now uh, this is from a, online Langapedia. Talk about the history. So here's a pocket watch made for the H man. That's right. Uh, they made this voluntarily. And again, you know, you got all the Germans saying, "Oh, we were following orders. We were following orders. <laughs> we were we were just doing what we were told." No, these guys volunteered to make a special gift for Hitler in the early 30s, you know, before anybody was forced to do anything. They were sucking up to the H-man himself uh, in the early 30s. Uh, and um, yeah, that is, uh, that's the reality. So these guys were uh, Nazis. They were using slave labor. They were using forced labor uh, to make their watches during the war. They were making watches for the uh, uh, SS. See that? There you go. What's that? What is that over there? So, yeah, so when you wear a Lange on your wrist, you see the evolution? Can you see the evolution, basically? I mean, it's a very clear evolution, right? It's a very clear evolution from the SS watch to that. Now, 
Uh, this is some, but if you look at their earlier watches, they they didn't have that really. This is looks more of a well. The, the font has got the it's got a little Nazi vibe, but uh, but if you look at some of these other watches, right? Like these are pretty classical watches, right? You know, these are more or less classical. So when they restarted Alanga, why weren't they going for this look? Now they actually were early on, but then they pivoted to the uh, the Nazi vibe, right? The Nazi vibe. Uh, and again, listen. Um, you can see it's a very, very clear evolution. Now, let me go to another site here. Uh, again, uh, the Nazi past of Langenzon uh, is, uh, there you go, there's the man himself. Uh, and listen, you got to give him credit. Uh, they were very, they were, you know, they knew how to dress at least. You know, at least they weren't walking around in cargo shorts and flip-flops, um, you know, like, like a lot of these Antifa guys are, right? Uh, they dressed up. Uh, so... Uh, okay, so we got some of their uh, prisoners over there. Uh, you know, are they smiling? I don't know. Maybe they're forced to smile. Uh, now again, they're, they're probably they're, we we don't. I don't think we were. They ran a concentration camp, uh, but apparently some people did die in their care. Uh, but listen, a lot of the German, a lot of the German industrial companies uh, were using slave labor. Uh, you know, Audi, Volkswagen, Porsche, uh, Krupp. Uh, you know, I mean, all of them basically. I mean, the whole country was in on it. You know. It was uh, their whole country was basically in on it. It was it wasn't like um, some like you know isolated thing. It was part of the whole system. You know they they all benefited. Most Germans benefited from uh, the Nazi affiliation. Just like uh, in the U.S., we have big tech, the Democratic Party, the left wing. It's the same thing. You got the axis. You got that axis of evil uh, of the left wing, and they are basically Nazis. Like uh, you know that uh, Jack Dorsey, the Twitter people. Uh, their whole vibe, uh, you know, they're just leftist Nazis. Um, probably were, I would say, again, worse, yes, I would actually say they are worse than uh, uh, the H man himself, than Hitler himself, that's right. Um, now, uh, so the, yeah, so did I, did I cover everything? Was I too subtle? I don't know if I was too subtle, you know, I'm trying to keep this a very, you know, a neutral, politically neutral channel. Now, it's interestingly enough, let me let me close out on one note. If you, are you thinking of getting a Langunzon? They're overvalued. Oh shit! I didn't even get into the best part. I didn't get into the best part of this shitter company. So it's not a real business. I mean, I shouldn't say not a real business. It's not a real brand. They're trying to sell you this heritage, this um, you know, uh, 19th century heritage. Blah blah blah. You know, uh, you know, Saxony. Blah blah blah. Now look. The reality is, this is a shitter brand. It's a, it's a revived. Somebody, you know, came up. You know, they got the name. It was because after the war, the Russians, the Soviets, came in. The Soviets came in. Uh, they took all the machinery from Langunzon, from uh, Glashuta, and uh, they they sent it all back to the Soviet Union. And you know what happened? They came up with this. They came up with this. The Vostok. Uh, basically, the Russian watch, the Soviet watch industry was started by. Uh, the um, all the machinery, all the parts from Langunzon and from uh, Glasuta. If you open up this watch, uh, you're going to see the heritage. This is actually made by Glasuta Langunzon machinery. They probably took. I'm certain that they took a bunch of uh, you know Heinzes and Franzes. Uh, you know some of these uh, Germans. They took them back as prisoners. Uh, you know, put them to work as slave labor. Uh, and uh, you know to get the machinery started, and that's what happened. And this is actually from uh, my I inherited this from my grandfather. This is an original Soviet era watch, nineteen late fifties, early sixties, a gold plated, and um, yeah, good qualities. This watch has it, actually no, it, I, I, it was serviced exactly once because that uh, uh, second hand fell off, and. Um, you know, it was long unused, and I, I wouldn't actually get a repair, or, you know. Uh, I'll get into that story later. It's a little whole sentimental story, but yeah. So this is a direct descendant of Langunzon. You can actually see the resemblance a little bit. There's a little bit of a vibe there uh, to also Glasuta. Now, again, the, this thing, this company was not in continuous operation. No, they basically were out of business after the war, right? They were shut down. All the machinery, everything was shipped out, all their workers to the Soviet Union. This is the real, this is the real Langunzon right here. Uh, this is the real 1960s Langunzon made from their factory parts, their machinery and everything. Maybe even their labor. I'm sure they had, uh, you know, Heinz and Franz. Uh, Hans and Franz were making these watches, right? Uh, before they were shipped off to uh, Siberia, uh, right? So that is, uh, that's the deal. Now, 
you know, they revived this company. It was, it was one of these brands. You know, these Swiss are all a bunch of grifters and scammers. Like, it's like Blanc Pond, like Jacques de Rose. You know, like a bunch of these brands that, you know, they're, they're, they're like they're defunct and then somebody comes in and revives it. Now, I do know a thing about that, actually. But anyway, that's for a, a different uh, time. Uh, but yeah, but look, people are buying to that brand. Does it work? Yes, it works. That's right. It does work. So all the, um, you know, all the fanboys, they're basically buying that brand which was just a new brand. It's a new company. There's no history to 1920s. All the people are new. All the whatever. It's probably not even made by real Germans. They probably got the Muslim immigrants. They probably got some Africans and some uh, Turks, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, the migrants that they've taken in are making these watches. So they're not even real German watches. You know, uh, that is, uh, that's what's going on with Germany. It is overrun by migrants. Um, so there we go. Check this out, baby. Uh, now look, would you rather pay fourteen grand for this, or I mean, I don't know, man. You can get a Vostok for you know five, a couple hundred bucks. Look, I mean, I don't know. I don't see the difference, really. I I, I don't, <laughs> to be honest. I know this one is gold plated. This is the whatever. It is gold. Who who gives a shit? Let me see that movement. Where is the movement? Show me that movement, baby. Yeah, they got a nice movement. That's the first thing these guys do. They want to show you that movement. The watch itself, not so much. The watch itself, not so much. They want to show the movement. They do want to show. I mean, nobody looks at the movement. I want to see the time, right? I mean, look, the first thing they show you in that picture is they show you the movement. That's what these guys are, the bunch of perverts. Look at this. This is a listing. The first thing they show you is the movement. That's the whole, that's all they got. All they got is their movement. They got nothing else. It's a, it's a blank shell of a, empty shell of a company. Um, so yeah, so the, don't believe that story, the tomato can story, uh, the grift about the, the heritage. There is no heritage. It's a new company started by a couple of grifters uh, with uh, Nazi nostalgia. Uh, and uh, that's all it is. Okay, now, uh, if you want a better watch, I'd get a Glass Huta. I'd get a Glass Huta, which is actually, I think, a much better watch uh, and uh, cheaper. It's the same story. They got nice movements. They got everything the same, cheaper and better. Or you can get yourself a real watch, uh, which is a Patek Philippe. But again, it's very different. This is elegance, beauty, accuracy, everything. And this is like a, a wannabe. It's a pretender, right? It's kind of like that lumbering, heavy uh, Deutsche Bahn train compared to a uh, Frecce Rossa. Uh, you know, that's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, it is uh, pure crap. Uh, if you buy one of these, you're basically a, a loser. You're a loser. You're a sucker. You're a tomato can eater. Um, you know, because you're, you know, you're getting scammed. You're getting scammed by this movement thing, okay? Nobody gives a shit about your movement. It's like, uh, you know... Again, you got you driving a, if you're driving a, if you're driving a Lamborghini, you're not gonna pick up chicks by saying, "Hey, baby, check out my engine." Okay, they're not interested in your engine. They're interested in the look of the car and how they how they will look inside your car, next to your car when they post that picture uh, on Instagram for all their little uh, whore friends. Right? Uh, that is that is uh, what it's all about. It's not about the engine. Uh, Again, the uh, especially in the watches, you know, in cars, yes, the engine makes a difference. In watches, it makes zero difference today. They're all accurate. The debate has been settled by Casio. All right, so this is ugly. It's a piece of shit. You have no taste if you have one of these, and you probably, you probably, you know, uh, your membership is uh, you have been paying your bills at the local S and M club because you know you have to buy this overpriced watch. That's what happens. You know, you you spend fifty grand on a watch and you got no money. Uh, to buy the the leather, the 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 latex, you know, the the toilet accessories, all that stuff, uh, you know, for the leather club, you don't have money left over because you get you you wasted all your money on one of these overpriced shitters. So, listen, I hope I wasn't too subtle. Anyway, let me know what you punters think. Leave your nasty and vicious comments below. I'll see you all in the next one.